Hello, thank you for the attention that you are giving me to share with you um, an exciting opportunity on how pineapple leaf fiber can serve as an enabling technology replacement for prosthesis design, especially in low and middle income countries such as Ghana. My name is Eric Walawi Gaba. I'm a final year PhD student from the Department of Biomedical Engineering, University of Ghana. I also work as a prosthetic and orthotic educator here in Ghana. Recently, I was with a group of amputees having a conversation on what goes into designing prosthesis. And this is what one of them asked me. He asked that, what are we engineers in low and middle income countries such as Ghana doing to tackle the high cost of prosthesis. This is relevant to what I'm about to share with you because there is a cost constraint when it comes to accessing prosthesis in low and middle income countries. And this is what my PhD research work has been on. To start with, I would want to share with you a bit of background on natural fibers um, and then the objective of the work. So natural fibers have been investigated previously and uh, it has been noted that they have uh, properties which are conducive and appropriate for reinforcing polymers. Notable among them is their biodegradability, um, their lightweights and their high specific strength and uh, as far as this work is concerned, the low cost factor is very important. Now, when you consider the gold standard for prosthetic socket reinforcement currently, um, that has to do with the use of carbon fiber because of its high strength and stiffness. Um, so it is the gold standard for reinforcing prosthetic devices. But you would agree with me that um, acquiring this material, carbon fiber, is expensive. So the challenge in low and middle income countries is the high cost that comes with having a good functional prosthesis. In low and middle income countries, they normally import the carbon fiber. So in effect, the cost of acquiring a prosthesis becomes very high. And this is the challenge that we are facing. And that is what my research work is on trying to find or identify um, alternative biomaterials that can be used for reinforcing prosthetic devices. So the research work started with looking for available natural plant fiber, uh, which has the potential to be used for reinforcing uh, polymer. Here in Ghana, we are into pineapple production and then we have identified that after they are harvested, the leaves are just discarded. That is, they become an agric waste just to be dealt with. So we went to look at what are the mechanical properties of the fibers that these leaves have. So we did that work and then we published that. Um, and the results of that work we, we were exciting as we realized that the fiber, the quality of fiber that we harvested from them hold a good potential which can be used for reinforcing a polymer. So the objective of this current work was to study the influence of the fiber that we have harvested, the orientation and then the volume fraction on the metametacarylate based polymer matrix um, for prosthetic socket application. So what um, I did was to and visit the field and then acquire the 
um, the, the leaves that is after the pineapples have been harvested and then manually extract the fibers and um, that is a picture in um, C here and then after harvesting them manually we um, chemically treated them um, using 6% sodium hydroxide and again to why 6% sodium hydroxide again so in that previous work we did a differential chemical treatment study to see the best um, alkali concentration that will yield the best fiber with optimum properties so it happened that the 6% um, sodium hydroxide treatment for one hour um, helped the fiber assume good mechanical properties so which again was published in that previous work uh, on the mechanical and the structural characterization of the pineapple leaf fiber so moving on we considered the commonest uh, polymer metric that is used in the design of processing socket that is a methyl metacrylate based resin so what we did um, for our methodology was to um, orient the fiber in three directions okay uh, relative to the axis so we had a zero degrees orientation 45 and then 90 degrees orientation and then we designed these rectangular um, beams and then we subjected them to uh, three point flexural tests so the first part of the result is on the flexural properties of the composites the table as you see here contains information on the flexural strength the modulus and the percentage strain at failure for the three types of fiber orientation combined with the fiber volume fraction now what are the striking things that we observed one we realized that at lower fiber volume fractions that is between five to fifteen percent the fiber negatively influence the composite strength okay that is to say that the fiber does not improve upon the uh, polymer strength rather it limits it and that is because according to the composite theory there is a fiber volume below which the fiber do not increase the composite strength but rather limit it because they begin to behave as a string of holes that limit the composite strength so that's one thing that we observe and then secondly we realize that the influence of the orientation that is the fiber orientation was mainly realized at a higher fiber volume fraction that is from 20 percent upward so we observe that for the 0, 0.45 and then the 90 fiber orientation the differences in the composite strength we observed occurred from the 20 percent fiber volume fraction upward that is when we started realizing the influence of the orientation and what did we find out we realized that the best combination of fiber volume fraction and then orientation that yielded the optimum composite strength was for 40 percent fiber volume fraction with zero degrees fiber orientation so that was a combination that yielded the best composite strength and then the um, composite modulus the second aspect of the result was on uh, micro mechanical modeling so in this area we compared the experimental result that we had with the various uh, micro mechanical models that are there um, specifically the helping chai the modified rule of mixture and then the rule of mixture uh, we tried to see how does the experimental result that we have compare with these three uh, models and it happened that for each of the orientation that we had they behaved differently with the models so we observed that the zero degrees orientation um, the experimental result was best fitted to the helping child with uh, an extracted r squared value of 0 
and which happens to be the, the best fiber orientation that give the optimum composite strength and then the composite flexural uh, modulus. Yes. Another thing that we also investigated was on identifying the maximum practical fiber volume fraction that is responsible for the optimum composite properties. And this is relevant when it comes to composite mechanics. And it was observed that for the zero degrees fiber orientation, um, we realized that the 40 percent fiber volume fraction give the best composite strength and then the composite modulus. And how is this relevant for the intended application? Now, when you consider resource limited areas of the world where polymer access is an issue, a composite system made with significantly less resin Okay, but having a majority of the desired mechanical properties can be obtained when you look at the combination of the zero degrees fiber orientation, uh, which moved with the 40% fiber volume fraction. When you compare that to the 45 and then 90, it simply meant that you needed a smaller amount of resin when it comes to getting the best results with the zero degrees fiber orientation. So we went a step further to simulate and investigate the behavior of the material um, by finite element analysis. So what we did was that the best performing composite from the experimental work that we did, uh, which is the zero degrees fiber orientation with the 40% fiber volume fraction, the material properties of that was used to model a socket, a transtibial socket in solid edge and we performed a finite element analysis in ANSYS. So the result from the simulation um, indicated that the maximum stress that the socket experienced was 50 times lower than the experimentally um, determined strength of the material. So um, whereas the, the, the experimental result of the composite was 50 megapascal. The maximum stress experienced by the socket was 0 0.7 megapascal. And so that indicated that the, um, the, 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 the material that we propose in this work is good enough to sustain the load that we exerted on it, which was actually the average load or um, uh, weight of amputees that normally visits um, one of the most popular prosthetic centers here in Ghana. And then secondly, we looked at the total uh, deformation, the distribution of deformation of the socket. And again, we noticed that the, the, the maximum deformation was observed on the proximal medial lateral side of the socket. In the, again, this showed that um, the, the material that is being proposed for the design of prosthetic socket, especially in low and middle income countries, um, is strong enough to sustain the weight that the amputees, the, that is the average weight of amputees in this region um, would exert on the socket. So in conclusion, um, this work shows that uh, locally available pineapple leaf fiber can actually serve as a good alternative for prosthetic application, especially in resource limited parts of the world. And this work has proven that the best combination and that can help to do those kind of uh, designs is the zero degrees fiber orientation with the 40% um, fiber volume fraction. And secondly, the result also showed that in resource limited parts, again, where access to um, polymer resin is a challenge. A composite system, that is the zero degrees with the 40% fiber volume fraction, 
composite system can be made uh, where a significantly low resin okay can be used to design a process socket with majority of the desired mechanical properties and then thirdly um, it is concluded that based on the micro mechanics model that were investigated um, the best model or the model that best fitted with the various orientation happen to be the harpoon chai model so meaning that the composite strength can be predicted and um, that is a zero degrees orientation um, can be predicted using the harpoon chai model and then finally the FEA result also shows that the stress strain and then the total deformation observed um, are lower than the experimental results obtained for the zero degrees um, composites. So in effect, um, what these amputee asked me um, about how or what we engineers in this part of the world doing to tackle the high cost of prosthesis um, happen to be what I'm just sharing with you here. So this is an opportunity for enabling technology replacement. When you look at the carbon fiber, um, the cost of acquiring it and the effect that it has, you know, in total when it comes to how much the procedures cost for um, these people who, in, who are in the rural areas and all that, um, it is good that we start looking at how an alternative that is environmentally relevant, um, economically um, um, affordable material such as a pineapple leaf fiber um, can be used for reinforcing prosthetic socket. And currently I'm actually looking for a postdoc opportunity um, to take this work further and to see how we can start developing the fibers um, for this intended application. This work so this work was done under the supervision of um, Professor Elvis K. Chibu. Um, he's a senior lecturer at the University of Ghana Department of Biomedical Engineering. He has a background in biophysics. Um, also, Dr. Bernard Oswe Simen, who is also a senior lecturer at the same department, University of Ghana. Um, he has a background in material science and engineering. Professor L.C. Effa Kaufman also has a background in bioengineering. He's also from the Department of Biomedical Engineering, University of Ghana. Uh, but currently, he's the founding head of the prosthetics and orthotics department at the University of Allied Health here in Ghana. And then fourthly, Professor Johan Foster, um, who is the NSERC Comfort Industrial Research Chair in Advanced Bioproducts at the University of British Columbia. Vancouver. So this is the work that we have been doing. That is uh, the exciting intervention of creating opportunity for enabling technology replacement for prosthetic design application using pineapple leaf fiber. My email is available. I will be excited to have you and reach me as we look more into this work and how we can take this work a step further.